Good morning, good afternoon, good night. It's your girl Deja here. I know it's been a while since I've been here. Sorry about that. Today I'm gonna make a cauliflower steak dish for anybody that don't want to eat meat or just are vegan or vegetarian. At this table, I have everything I need. I have a head of cauliflower. Make sure the size you get is perfect for you. The bigger the cauliflower, the bigger the steaks, and vice versa. I also have one onion, some tomato paste. I have parsley, carrots, garlic, and then I also have some thyme. Before I usually cook a dish, I usually sharpen my knife, which I use my steel as you can see here. But I do have this other knife sharpener that you can get from Caden Cooking Tools. I have It has three sharpening compartments for your knife and also on this side, it has a sharpening blade for your scissors that you use to cut meat. It comes with a nice handle and also comes with other colors and very durable and stable. First thing we're gonna do is start preparing the cauliflower steaks. I'm gonna take the bottom off, being careful not to rip none of the florets off. Once you're done getting a big leaf soft, you're gonna cut into the middle of the cauliflower. Once again, trying not to get none of the florets off. Stop. Now what I like to do is turn the cauliflower upside down so I can see how the stalk is shaped and where it's placed so I can know how to cut it. From this one, it seems that I'm gonna get two good steaks out of it. One from each of the sides that I cut from. The steaks I'm cutting is gonna be pretty thick because once you do bake them, they do shrink in size. And the point of a steak is for it to be kind of big and meaty. So this is about a two inch steak, maybe. I'm not always good with measurements. Once you have your steaks, you could use the rest for miscellaneous stuff, roasted cauliflower, which is bomb. Please do that. So here we have our two steaks. Now that we got our steaks ready, I just have a sheet pan with foil and lightly oiled. You're just going to place your cauliflower as such. I preheated my oven for 350 to get it hot. You don't want to saw in a cold oven. It will take forever. Now I'm just going to season it. I'm going to brush it with some olive oil. And now I'm just going to season it with some salt, pepper, and cumin. Now you just want to make sure you rub it in, make sure you get it inside of the crevices. And once you do the other side, you're going to rub it again, rub it in again and make sure you get it around the whole cauliflower.
So there you have it. Now I'm just going to place them in the oven for 10 minutes, flip them over, and then another 10 minutes until they're nicely golden on each side. Now we're just going to start cutting the vegetables. I'm going to start with the onion that I'm just going to slice. None of the cuts matter. Uh, just make them small enough to cook faster, but then evenly to cook all together at the same time. Now for the carrots, I'm just going to peel. Sometimes I don't peel my carrots if I'm making a stock or anything because the nutrients are, is in the skin. But for these, I'm going to peel. And now I'm just going to cut into small pieces. And of course, I forgot one. Now for the time, I'm just gonna pick the leaves off. And for the parsley, I'm using both the stem and the leaves because the stem also holds a lot of flavor. And since I'm using this to make a sauce, it'll be perfect. But I'm not using all of the stems because I don't want the parsley to take over the whole dish. Now I'm just gonna run my knife through the herbs, roughly chopping them, and I'm gonna do the same with the stems as well. And this is me trying to look for more bowls and getting frustrated because I never have what I need. but. We make do.
Now that all the vegetables and stuff is cut, now we can get cooking. It's my little happy dance, because I love when I'm done prepping. Now that we switched locations, I got my pan heating up. Make sure you use a deep pan since we're making a sauce. I'm just gonna line up with some olive oil. And I'm gonna patiently wait for this to get hot. Years later, I'm finally gonna add the onions. You don't want the heat too high cause you're gonna sweat the onions to bring out its natural sweetness and it will take some time. So please do not be impatient like I was. Now for deglazing, I will be using this white wine that I bought from the supermarket. If you have regular white wine that you drink, that is perfect. I don't have that in my house, so I have to use store board. Now once the onions has wilted, it's a perfect time to add your carrots. This you could boost up the heat just a little bit and add a little bit more oil because you want the carrots to really get some color onto them. At this point, you want to add your garlic. Once it starts getting fragrant, then you want to add your tomato paste. So have them both ready. So for the tomato paste, I like to cook it a little bit by itself. So I made a little space in the middle just to pit the tomato paste. And then I let that cook until it starts to brown. And that is a good way to get some color and more flavor out of the tomato paste. Once you start seeing the dark tomato paste form in the bottom, you want to switch from your spatula to a metal spoon because it's better for you to scrape the bottom of the pan to get all that flavor from off of it. Now I'm gonna add the white wine. You could add up to a cup, a cup and a half, and then we're gonna let this reduce down so the sauce could get nice and thick. And make sure that you're scraping the bottom to get all that good, delicious flavor off the pan. It is not burnt, it is not bitter, it's delicious.
And now you're gonna add your herbs and let that all cook down together. Here's a close up with some light so you can see how pretty it looks. This is the thickness you wanted to get it to. So now we're just gonna puree it all together to make the grand sauce. Now we're gonna season it with just salt, pepper, and lemon juice. You could also add a little bit of water if it's too thick. Here I'm just adding just a tad bit more olive oil as well. Yes, I know it's a lot. That's what your sauce should look like. You can also use this for any pasta or any other dish you want. It's perfect. So this is what the sauce looks like up close. It kind of resembles tomato sauce. That's why you could use it in pasta, but it's also good for people that's allergic to tomatoes or just don't like them. Now it's time for the cauliflower that's been roasting. Look at that. Now that is some beautiful cauliflower steaks. And it is kind of early, so sorry for my slowness. It took me a minute to realize where I'm going to place this. Now that I mastered where I was going to place it, I'm just going to garnish it with some parsley leaves that I just picked off. Like, look at the cauliflower. It just looked like a piece of meat, don't it? And here you have it, a quick, easy, roasted cauliflower steak dish with vegetable puree, good for vegans, vegetarians, or just a meatless Monday. Well, thank you for watching my video. I know I wasn't in it and I know I wasn't talking in the beginning because they're doing construction on my roof, whatever the hell they're doing. But it's slowed down. But if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share to all my first vegan slash vegetarian dish. No meat, no dairy, none of that. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Follow my Instagram, my Facebook. I do post stuff up there other than YouTube. Also, if you live in the Brooklyn area, I am a personal cook. I do do personal events, personal celebrations, personal anything. So please let me know. Hit me up on Instagram and we could get the party started. But thanks for watching. Be safe. Peace out.